Hello once again, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of AIW's The Card is Going to Change. Before we get into this week's episode, uh, we of course want to say thanks to those that help us bring the show to you for free on whichever platform you choose to listen. Uh, thanks to uh, Smoking Jay's Barbecue. It is delicious, and you're going to get to have it this week if you come to AIW's Hell on Earth. Uh, they are out of the Maslin area. You can go do pickup right now. They're doing delivery via uh, Uber Eats and DoorDash. Follow along on social media at Smokin underscore J's, J-A-Y-S, B-B-Q. And you can get all of that goodness if you are down there in the Maslin area. And, of course, a thanks to the merger between Smart Mark Video and IWTV. Watching AIW has never been easier. Go to smartmarkvideo.com, purchase any AIW show on DVD that has ever been available on DVD or MP4, and you can also sign up on IWTV, independentwrestling.tv, use the code ABSOLUTE so they know that we sent you, and you're not only going to get to watch a rotating archive of AIW shows, but so many other independent wrestling promotions as well. Countless hours. I mean, you may not even be able to watch every single thing on there in one lifetime. There's there's that much independent wrestling uh, as well as other shows on IWTV. And uh, with that being said, folks, it is a hard sell week. One of the biggest hard sell. Hard sell. Let's do it. One Ooh. of the biggest hard selling weeks that we have had uh, in some time as we it get is the back hard to, sell. It, it yeah, is the hard sell. AIW is back. Uh, I know we've been back, but uh, it is officially back. Back. We're back to our traditional shows. Uh, We're like this back, coming Friday back now. Yeah, back back. Way the way back back. Way and, back. And uh, hell on earth, you know, it all kind of started with hell on earth, and that's what we're we're kicking things off with again here. Uh, it's it's a tremendous week. Before we get too far into it, though, John Thorne, we got to do the shout out segment. So, shout them out. Shout them out. I'll tell you who I'm shouting out. I'm I'm uh, I'm leading off with a Bogside Pub. And I'm saying that because, folks, that is where our AIW after party is going to be this week out in Willowick, uh, just a few minutes down the road from East Lake and Four Sports. We'll be at Bogside Pub. They're going to leave the kitchen open late for everybody. They'll be serving up drinks. Uh, it should be a great time. They are planning ahead. They're gonna they're gonna specials? staff it up. Uh, there will be specials. Um, let me see if I can look those up. Ill prepared here. What are you, you know? I'm doing a shout out, and I didn't even look to see if there were specials yet. There, I am Everybody told look? that there will be specials, but I uh, did not know off the top of my head what they would be. Right now, their post just says drink specials. So, uh, but drink specials I'll starting at 11 p.m. So, there you go. There will be specials. What they are, don't know yet. But uh, there should be some draft specials, uh, some tall boy specials, or something like that. So, uh, oh, the Duke loves a good draft. He does love a good draft. Yeah. And uh, he'll be able to get that at Bogside Pub this Friday uh, in Willowick, right down the road from Eastlake and Four Sports. And uh, like I said, the kitchen is going to be open late. So everybody always worried about food at these after parties. It's going to be there. It's happening. So there you go. There's a shout out for you, folks. Uh, I'm going to shout out also uh, the, uh, the, the gentleman from Members Only. Malcolm Cambridge, Calvin G. Lewis, going hard at uh, the Bitcoin Boys on a promo. I don't know. Did you did, did you happen to watch it? I did not get a chance to see it yet. Oh yeah, bring it, bring it on, bring the heat there. Talking about uh, Mikey Montgomery's obsession with uh, the Power Rangers, but calling the the boys out for not really being at training. You know all that good stuff. So I gotta agree with all that. Yeah, you know that's I I watched it and I thought, man, it's as if these guys listen to the podcast 
and took everything that John Thorne says and decided to put it in a promo about the Bitcoin boys. I'm sometime did it. Somebody did it. <laughs> Somebody started listening to me in this freaking company. They uh, they made claims to having been in the hot tub of Eric Taylor's mom before uh, when Eric oh. was not present, and they called no. the Duke. They called the Duke uh, the Bitcoin boys' sugar daddy. Yeah, oh, we're getting a little off. We're getting a little off track here now, guys. Yeah, just I mean, wild, wild stuff. They went after him. Uh, so shout out to those guys. You got any shout outs? I am gonna give a shout out to uh, Nick Sanka. Saw Nick Sanka on um, Friday night. He had a bit of a a rough week last week. Uh, his son was actually attacked by a dog. And had to be hospitalized. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, very, you know, rough stuff going on there. So, got Nick Sanka out of the house. Uh, had some of the other boys come and, uh, you know, cheer him up a little bit. Have a have a guy's night out, so to speak, on uh, Friday night. So, did a little bit of that on Friday. Oh, man. Best wishes to Sully. Yeah, Sully is, yeah, he's, you know, he, he's doing good, but, I mean, a uh, pretty pretty tough experience for, you know, not only Sully, but, you know, a parent to, to go through that as well. So uh, I was able to get Nick out and uh, him and uh, the missus will be in attendance this Friday night at, at Hell on Earth. Uh, Going to do a little parents night out at AIW this Friday. Hey, there we go. That's good. Good for them. Uh, I'm going to give a, a shout out to uh, my niece. Today is uh, my niece's 12th birthday as we record this. So she's not going to listen to it, but uh, you know what? I feel good about shouting her out. I don't know that she, she although she is, uh, this niece was a big Zack Ryder fan when she was younger. So uh, she was a big fan of the broski. And uh, would do the woo woo woo, you know it all the time. So she gets a, she gets the birthday shout out. I'm gonna give a shout out to Fonzie, who uh, I had a little Sunday Sunday night dinner with uh, this this past weekend. Fonzie was uh, doing a loop with Sabu, a bunch of autograph signings throughout uh, Eastern. Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. They had a bunch of different uh, appearances lined up, <coughs> and uh, Fonzie was flying out of Cleveland, so uh, he gave me a call, and uh, we we met up for dinner and uh, hung out for a little bit. And uh, you know, always good to see Fonzie, even though you know we're going to be seeing him again this Friday. Uh, went to BJ's Brew House with Fonzie. Uh, Fonzie go. was really trying to get a nice piece of fish, and it just did not work out for him there. Uh, he thought uh, the waiter said mahi mahi, and they said it was ahi or something, you know, some kind of tuna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, ahi uh, tuna, yep. Yeah. They said, wait a second, do you really want ahi tuna in your fettuccine Alfredo? And he said, what? Uh, so, yeah, Fonzie always looking for a nice piece of fish. Shout out to Fonzie. <laughs> oh man, should have brought him to the the flat iron, got some some perch. I have to take Fonzie there sometime. Uh shout out to um man, who was I I just had it lined up. I was gonna shout somebody out. Well, I'll say this shout out to Max Caster. We're, we're bringing him in. You made that announcement. Uh, yeah, it's, I was finally able to to work it out. Um been in the works for for quite some time actually uh originally was supposed to happen back in august and things fell through uh but uh i'm <clears throat> extremely happy that we were able to to work it out for our first show of 2022 at the winchester which was announced earlier this week there you go and and uh i think my final shout out here is uh to the cleveland browns of hollywood higgins uh our own Derek Dillinger ran into him, took some photos 
with the director himself saying he wants to come to AIW. We'll see if that actually happens. Who knows? It would be exciting. We'd love to have him, of course. And, uh, you, you know, always be very exciting to have any sort of Browns players here. Uh, a fun fact, John Thorne. Fun fact. Uh, Hollywood Higgins wears the jersey number of the last Browns player to be in attendance at AIW. Gary Same Barnage. jersey number. Gary Barnage, number 82. I'm going to give a shout out to Nathan Zagura, who. Uh, it sounds like is going to be in the house uh, on Friday night. Him and I have been corresponding, and uh, you know he's followed AIW for quite some time. And now that uh, Matt Cardona is uh, the face that runs the place, so to speak, uh, Mister Zagora and potentially some friends will be heading out to the show this Friday. Um, you know, we, we uh, I was able to talk to him about getting him some tickets, and I, I guess uh, he's not coming alone, allegedly. So we will see how that goes this Friday night. You never know who's going to walk in. Wow. Well, maybe we'll end up uh, seeing our friend Justin from the dive bar. Who knows? He's, uh, he, he rolls with that Zagura camp sometime. Tell Justin to bring that, uh, bring, bring that last check. He did mention that when I saw him. <laughs> I went to a dive bar a couple of weeks ago. He said, hey, I'm pretty sure I owe you money. And I was like, you sure, you sure do. You sure do, pal. And, but he's he's good for it. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, yeah. Be sure good to see, not, uh, see those guys. I'm sure he's not going in a bankruptcy anytime soon. Yeah, I think we'll be okay there. We'll, we'll be getting that. Uh, so... There you go. That's the shout out segment. You got any more shout outs? No. No real shout outs this week, you know? Yeah. All right, Just cool. Getting ready, you know. Hectic week. I got to, you know. I'll shout people out up next week. We got to gear up get and in uh, the- get ready. Get in the zone. It's uh, it's show week, baby. We, we, are, we are back back, as we said at the top of the show. And hell on earth. New venue. Uh, oh yeah, new venue. New venue. Same expectations in terms of uh, anticipation of the show. What we've got going. We've got this mystery. We talked about it last week. Who is the third member? Who's joining Who's the, the Rip City man? Shooters? Who's the third man? Still don't well, you know. Think who it's it gonna is. be full on, full on join. That's what you think. Yeah. Why not? Right. If Brickster's I mean, down, it could be, could be, it could be one night only. It could be a full on join. I think. I think they're you know losing Brickster. I think they're looking for that full on join. You gotta. This could be the rivalry that keeps going here. The the Broskis, the Broski bunch taking on the Rip City Shooters. Uh, somebody mentioned in the Discord. Uh, who was it thrown out? There was there was there were some. Potential ideas and thoughts thrown out, and and people speculating. A lot of speculation. A lot of speculation. A lot of speculation. A lot of speculation. Some people think it's going to be razor sharp. You think it'll be razor sharp? I don't know. Could be. They had a uh, confirm. Not here to confirm nor deny. Do you know? Do you yet know who it is? Or have you been made uh, aware? I, I have an. I, I have a. I have an idea, and I think you it's, do. I think it's out there in the world if you really look close enough. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Razor Sharp again. They were that was a UXWA deal. A uh, lot of possibilities. Oh, some people are speculating that the shooters will have a third member, but the Broski bunch are going to add a fourth member and still have numbers game. What do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, it could happen, right? It could, it happen. could happen. Broski's got friends. We not I mean, he already, you know, rolled in with uh with Myers. Nathan so who knows? Zagura. Could be Nathan Zagura. It could be Nathan Zagura. Could be Nathan Zagura. It could be uh well Swaggle has uh has retired, so I guess it won't be him. 
Uh, no, 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 no. Swag uh, was uh, not a, not retired. He says he's 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 mad at that speculation. He says he's not retired. Well, he left his little boots in the middle of the ring. That's what I thought. He did, uh, did he do that? Yes. Because that's what I said. I said I think he left your little boots in the ring, your little shoes. He did. He's denying it. No, he one hundred percent did it. There's, he's denying. There's photo evidence. There's video evidence. We could check the tape, man. He did that. Hugged Landon. And left his little little shoes, little boots in the middle of the ring. Yeah, I think they're shoes. Yeah, they're like wrestling shoes, yeah. Which not to not to venture not to venture off course too much, but anybody out there that listens to the uh, major wrestling figure podcast is, is aware of this, but Steve, you may not be. Uh did you know that uh Dylan Postel thought Farouk was pronounced Varouk? He thought that somehow that the F and the A made a V noise? No, come on. It's yeah, it's on the it's revealed on the major wrestling figure podcast, Va Rook. He thought it was Va Rook. Why would he that come on, Dylan? I, when I thought it was crazy. It's crazy, that, right? Yeah. That's I mean did he does he think it's pronounced Vather? I don't know. <laughs> Instead of father? <laughs> like there are words that have an F and A together it's not uh this is a whole this was like a whole thing on that on their podcast you don't run vast that's for sure you know come on man get it it's still impossible for you wow get it together he's gonna be on the jericho cruise by the way good for him that'll be fun and exciting how do we get booked on the jericho cruise thorn you and i that's beside the point uh all right hell on earth no idea (laughs) <laughs> we we talked about some of the matches last week, but there is uh, an additional match that we They're did not mention there, last week. They are now all out there. We didn't mention this one last week, uh, but it has since hit the well a couple matches actually. Now that I think about it, has, has hit the the Instagram and and the internets. Uh, you got this four way with Chase Oliver, Pretty Boy Smooth, Levi Everett. And Derek Dillinger with Ziggy Heim, of course, in his corner. I don't know what to expect out of this combination of people in one match. Uh, to be perfectly honest, neither do I. <laughs> I mean, you got this high flyer, Chase Oliver. You have a nearly seven foot uh, pretty boy smooth. And I mean, look, we've seen him uh, go toe to toe with Derek and many times. That's been a thing. But you throw Levi Everett into the mix and Chase, I don't what in the world? <laughs> what were you thinking when you put this match together? Uh, you know, I, I thought I thought maybe it looks uh, interesting. That's what I thought. It it I certainly said, this does. Looks look like interesting. An interesting, this looks like an interesting combination. It's, it certainly is. It's, it's a very agree? I I wholeheartedly agree. This is a very interesting combination. I'm I'm extremely intrigued uh, by what's going to come out of this matchup. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the the graphic right now, and I'm I'm just trying to picture things in my head of what may happen. And uh, it's I don't know. This one could be really wild, but all these guys are gonna. I don't. I don't know who's the X factor in this. Chase Oliver, because we don't really watch him do very much ground and mat work. I guess Levi Everett is the obvious X factor. Now, why do you say that? Because you don't know what that guy's gonna do. <laughs> That's true. He's kind of a maniac. He's kind of a. He's a bit of a loose cannon himself. That Levi Everett. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I found these like, uh, it's like these like Biggins cards, like like cards in my uh, you know like Biggins stuff in the, my oh. office. Yeah, and like there's like just some of these like uh, cards that were on the side of like the old WWF ice cream bars and, and this thing. Oh wow! Kind of mesmerized, kind of mesmerized by it. Well, that's pretty exciting. Who you got? Who you got on there? Oh, I got uh, the big boss man, demolition, Hulkster, hacksaw, 
Bret Hart, Bobby Heenan. Wow. Just the WrestleMania three. Sid Justice. Mm-hmm. Andre the Giant and Bam Bam. Macho Man. Roddy oh. Piper. Those are all great. Very weird stuff. Yeah, very weird. Very weird little little find there. I'm sure. I don't know. They're probably not worth anything. Did you see that Sid right. Justice made it to an autograph signing recently? You know, the thing about Sid Justice is, I think he's made it to every autograph signing but ours. <laughs> well, that's not true. He definitely he's missed made it out to, on... Uh, he's made it to a few. Yeah, he was supposed to be at... Uh, he also missed the... Uh, what was the big episode of Raw? They were advertising him, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was supposed to be on Monday Night Raw, and he missed out on that. Uh, so that's pretty amusing. So, all right, let's get into it. Let's get all right, into so the four way is bringing the energy up. The four way wasn't the only match that was previously unannounced and that we didn't talk about last week. Uh, we also have a very big match. Uh, you know, TKD's twenty twenty one of proving himself continues. As he now matches up against Filthy Tom Lawler. Uh, what do you got, think about it? I mean, well, he's clearly got a Taekwondo background. He's, he's, uh, he's got a Tom he's, Kwando background. He's got his Tom Kwando background. Taking on Tom Lawler, who also uh, basically has a Tom Kwando background, really, right? It's the battle of the Tom Kwando. It's kind of as MMA style. I think he's more of, a, more of an all-around martial artist, I think. Yeah. I don't really know what his specialty is, to be honest. Uh, but this is a, this is another intriguing matchup. You know, uh, TKD continues to just evolve and uh, really come into his own uh, within the confines of pro wrestling. Um, and this is this is another great great test for him. We, he's his growth. For 2021, if we take a step back and look, uh, has been one of the one of the bright spots I think with AIW in terms of homegrown talent. It maybe it may be a little bit underestimated to be honest. Sink or swim time, you know, like uh, it's just everybody in the school has to kind of be ready for the you know the day that uh, their number is called, so to speak, and. You know, it's right now. It's it's Tom's time, and uh, you know the rest is up to him and the crowd, really. Yeah, the crowd the crowd seems to be behind him thus far, which is obviously great to see. We love seeing that when people are behind the, the homegrown talent. But I mean, the crowd may not behind may not be behind anyone the way they are typically behind Filthy Tom Lawler. So that's a whole other thing. And yeah, I don't. But I, I don't think this is a match for who's more popular, really. You know what I mean? Right. This is yeah, a test. You know, more or less. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Filthy Tom. I'm trying to think. The last time we saw Filthy Tom here in Cleveland. Uh, was he in Akron? No, we didn't have Filthy Tom in Akron. Because then, he was... Um, then it would have been Russell Rager weekend. I think that uh, I think that was it. I think I don't know that we've seen Filthy Tom since August. So it'll be nice to have him back. It's been a few months. Filthy Tom Lawler coming in. Hell on Earth. Black Friday. Was his debut at Hell on Earth? No, I don't recall. A jailet. Ah, uh, that's right. At a jail it. With uh, as as Dan Severn, Dan Severn cosplay. But he certainly had some memorable uh, Hell on Earth moments. Yeah, this is. I don't know what to expect from this one. Hard hitting, a lot of lot of kicks. A lot of, do lot you of like fists. this one? What do you think? I do, I do like this one. I I like uh, I I like the sink or swim time for Tom Kwando, for Tommy KD. You know that's that's a great way to say it. It's. You know, it's at this point, and you know there were there was a moment in time where Tom would be on a show, 
and then he'd be off for a few shows and then he'd kind of on. And I know that there was frustration uh, mounting for him. He wanted to do more. He wanted to figure out, you know, he wanted to get his number called, so to speak, so to speak, and, and, and get put in and, and have these big one-on-one matches. And he's gotten that in 2021. And so it, it just continues to be, okay, you know, here you are, Tommy KD. We're, we're giving you what you've asked for now you have to keep raising the bar for yourself and i like that i like that for him and you know filthy tom is certainly a guy to do that with now on the flip side tommy kd hasn't gotten wins in all these so at some point it has to for him stop being about the growth and you know when he's running in these big matches he's got to find a way to pick up a victory and that's awfully hard to do against filthy tom (coughs) Oh, sorry. That was a big oh, cough. Oh, my. Yeah. Justin Summers, RIP. Uh, Justin Summers yeah. is alive. <laughs> that sounded awkward. But <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I just think it's I, I think it's a great opportunity for Tom, honestly. And we're going to see what happens. I mean, there's, that's all you can really yeah. say about it. You know, you can't really get to... Uh, analytical analytical about it you know Mm -hmm. is that a word yeah i don't know i don't know if that's a word that is a word analytical is a word (laughs) you know what i mean though yeah i got you it's hard it's hard to break this one down i mean i expect more of an mma style just based upon the two but then again who knows we might be surprised by what we see tom lawler does take to the air on rare occasion very rare very rare but he's done it so who knows maybe you'll see that well, this is good what else this we is, got well you know we talked about a lot of it uh, last week well we did talk about this at the top of the show bitcoin boys members only a lot of trash talking has been going on there and in talk about sink or swim you know typically i feel like both of these signs have been put in matches with veterans. And, you know, if you're talking from a pull the curtain back situation, they've been put in situations where they could succeed. You know, they have, they've been in, in matches with people who've been around and uh, they've had some high quality stuff. And now here you go, young fellas. You know what I mean? This is, this is squarely on the shoulders of these four individuals. I mean, you'll have the Duke, I'm sure, running around outside with his boot, shouting, uh, wearing his fancy jacket, taking it off, telling me I have to watch I watch it and don't ruin it, all that nonsense. But uh, this, is, this is one that I'm looking forward to because here are four products in uh, different generations of the AIW Academy, and... This is is their moment to collectively show what the future of AIW is, more so than maybe any other match on this card, I think, because you've got guys who have been around on all these other matches, and and this is, you know, the Mike and Eric debuted, what, only two years ago, 2019? And, which is crazy to say it's only been two years when you think about that. Uh, that uh, 2020 is like 10 years. I know we talked about that, but uh, <laughs> you know, you've got them. And then here you have members only uh, fresh out making a lot of noise. And it's like this, I, I look at this and this could be a rivalry in AIW for, for years to come potentially. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I think this is really, you know, kind of, I, I say sink or swim, but you know it, it's also sink or swim for for both both of these teams um, to see you know what the what the future what the future may hold. You know uh, there are valid criticisms uh, that go in both directions. You know, and I'll leave it at that as far as I'm concerned. You know, in my position, so uh, this is one that. I plan to to watch and analyze and you know a, a lot is riding on this one I think for you know both sides 
Yeah, I, I agree. And and I think that in in some ways, a lot is riding on it, like we just said, for AIW and the future of AIW. You know, are these two teams or the, you know, uh, are these four individuals, are they people that we could build around as we move forward? And I think that uh, this Friday goes a long way in helping to, to determine that. Yeah, absolutely. Looking- I mean, it's just, you know, uh, I think if you watch that promo, there are a lot of valid criticisms going that way towards the Bitcoin boys, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, inexperience goes the other way against members only. Um so, you know, here's the thing is like, there's going to be more opportunities in 2022, but everybody wants to be on the big shows, you know, the marquee events, mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe one team isn't going to be on those marquee events after, after Friday. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, it's a big, it's a big moment though. Mikey back from injury too. So it'll be uh, it'll be good to see him back. We haven't seen him. We talked about that last week and in many months. And he'll be back on this thing. Uh, here's a question about Hell on Earth from uh, our Discord. Uh, how, how challenging was it to book Psycho Clown? Not, not really that challenging. Um <clears throat> I kind of have like a a middleman person that I talked that you know I, I deal with it's the same guy that when we had when we had Ultimo Dragon in uh, he helped translate uh, and uh, he you know he set us up with that with uh, La Parca L A Park um, so this this is really just you know kind of making better on the the deal that was made in. 2019 for April of 2020. Uh, once things started rolling, I, I uh, you know, made contact and reminded him that I sent a 50% deposit <laughs> like a year and a half ago. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, other than that, it's been pretty, you know, pretty easy. I, I You know, <laughs> those types of things you have to have kind of like a you know, an in-between person. Sure. So for people who haven't seen Psycho Clown, can you kind of give them an idea? What what are they in for Friday night? What should they expect? I mean, I think it's, you know, if you're a fan of AIW, uh, I think that we made it fairly obvious because of who he's matched up with. But Well, well yeah. you know, I... Psycho Clown's is real talent, like very talented. He's you know not a one dimensional performer by any means, but uh, he has you know been known to get down and dirty and do a, do a brawl, uh, fight style, so to speak. So I, I think him and Matthew Justice is is the perfect match. You know, we could have also very well put him in there with with the high flyers, and um, that would have delivered as well. But this on paper just seemed like something that was intriguing to me. This was always probably going to be the match, even in in 2019. There was a small possibility it was going to be Eric Ryan for, or I mean, excuse me, 2020. There was a small possibility it was going to be Eric Ryan at one point, too. All right. Uh, Looking here at the Discord, we've got some some, uh, other questions. Uh, Speaking of April shows, Rip City Pharmacist, Wondering if we know why "Keep Their Heads Ringing" uh, was not put up on IWTV. I have no idea how they decide what is uh, going up and what is what is not. Um, that's a question probably for at IWTV or whatever their Twitter handle is. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, uh, there's probably fifty something events that are, that aren't up there i think so yeah i have no idea all right so psycho clown is an example of an almost missed opportunity because of the pandemic and everything shutting down but we were able to circle back to it 
bring him in this Friday. Hell on earth, folks. East Lake Four Sports uh, assigned first few rows, uh, first two rows or whatever of seating is sold out. It's all general admission right now. You're allowed to bring Three chairs. Rows, yeah. uh, but Psycho Clown, great example of a, a missed opportunity that came back around. We will have him here. And the question was posed. Is there something that you can deem uh, maybe one of your biggest mistakes concerning AIW or one of your biggest missed opportunities through these years? Uh, just just read the question. Hold on. Let me try to analyze what this question is. Okay. And you can, an- you can answer as seriously or lighthearted as you'd like. It says, what is the biggest mistake you've made concerning AIW? Or maybe biggest missed opportunity. Um, man, that is like a <laughs> philosophical question. Yeah, right. Because uh, a missed opportunity a, could be just you never booked someone. Um, I mean, there's a million of those. I think, uh, you know, it's like it, it, I. I I regret the probably years in my life as a whole where like I was unemployed and I was struggling and that reflects the AIW shows, you know, we're trying to just get by Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was just, you know, like, I guess my regret is, is just like, it's like, there was a point where you have that dream, right? That this is going to be just what you do for a living, you know? Sure. And you're trying to make that work. And I I think that, you know, now in retrospect, like if I would have just, you know, found the foundation, like the foundation of like my life as a whole that I have now, instead of like putting it off for years, you know, kind of like, grew up a little bit so to speak earlier than i did i think aiw would have grown at a faster rate and and an earlier rate um and i guess you know another regret is kind of like removing myself from the reality of some of the I, I guess dire straits that the company was in at times that that Biggins was, was only dealing with when he was just handling the finances. Um, you know, that was kind of another thing that was like, okay, like it's, you know, I, I need to overhaul and um, really analyze everything that's going on in this company and you know it can't just do whatever we want and um you know that's when things were really refocused and um that was really more for 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 him and his legacy more more than mine if that makes sense um you know especially at that time because i just really wanted to just quit Mm -hmm. uh but if I would have maybe been mature enough to like sit down and actually face some of those those problems that you know only he was dealing with and he was keeping to himself and just kind of giving me like the you know the positive parts, you know, yeah. I think the company would have moved along better and further and faster than it did. So you know, I I think you know really just the biggest regret I think is just not taking responsibility like an adult for a long time and just kind of like living in the, you know, wrestler, you know, never, never land, I guess, mentality, you know, where like so many wrestlers and so many promoters live in, it's just kind of like, you know, no responsibility, no, you know, sense of reality like i i was uh guilty as that just as you know much as the next person is for a long time you know there's a lot of years of aiw that's kind of like a black hole and you know i i, I 
take full responsibility for that. So I think that is probably the biggest missed opportunity because it took us so long to kind of figure out that winning formula that, you know, that good recipe. And if we weren't out of necessity having to like nickel and dime every single thing that we did, I think we would have been able to, to grow, you know what I mean? To, yeah. to actually like sit down and grow the company and not worry. So I think that's, that's really ultimately, I think the biggest missed opportunity because, you know, like we've been around for, you know, 16 years at this point, but you know, there's a lot of people that only know about the last five, you know what I mean? Sure. There's 11, there's 11 other years that are, you know, some good, some bad, some indifferent, but I think if, you know, I would have kind of <laughs> come back to come back to the reality a little sooner than, than I did, I think we would have been further along in maybe in a different position. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I mm-hmm. think that, uh, you know, I think about that. And then, you know, uh, what was the other part of the question? Um, it was, is you know, however you really wanted to answer it, just biggest mistake or um, uh, missed opportunity. Yeah, and I think, like, another mistake is, and I think... Space Monkey we just, versus Carly Perez? Oh, no, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, like, getting wrapped up in small-time thinking, you know, and... Uh, not thinking bigger, you know, we would think bigger, but then get pulled into this like small time thinking and bickering and, um, you know, with whatever the new, you know, fly by night promotion was, uh, Mm -hmm. and just really (coughs) wasting unneeded energy on it and resources and time. Um, you know, that there was a lot of that, so probably would have like, you know, not, it's just, you know, it's, it, it's hard. Cause you know, you think, and it's just like, of course now you, you would think totally differently than you did then, you know, it's like, sure. One of those things, but I think, uh, but also at the same time, I think if we didn't have this long, hard road, who knows, you know, mm-hmm maybe you know that's the way it was supposed to be and that's why we do have such a a a working you know formula winning recipe whatever you want to call it right now because of you know all the trials and tribulations that have happened over 16 years you know if we would have been a you know rocket success right out of the gate you know i don't know how that success would have been handled you know at, at 21 through 25 probably even you know what i mean even through you know 30 you know like yeah there's uh, a lot to be said about that and you know how people handle any sort of you know success at any at any time you know when you're young so i don't know you know it's i i, I think obviously that there was a lot of mistakes made but at the same time i also think that that's kind of what makes our story unique because we did take the long hard road and you know it's it's not only made us safer you know well not safer but like you know uh, we're we're playing it a lot closer to the vest and a lot safer than maybe if we were so successful all the time you know i do know what it's like to be on you know the other side of the coin like down and out trying to make a promotion work with like I don't know, 50 bucks in the bank, you know what I mean? Like there's, so there's different, uh, there was different lessons learned, you know, obviously you don't want to always relive those hard times, but they do kind of, uh, prepare you for, for the worst. So I don't know, you know, it's, that's a, that's a really tough question, honestly, to (laughs) to answer because there's one. There's, there's, you know, there's good and bad to it all. And there's, you know, obviously you, there's so many things that you would change along the way, but it's like, 
at the same time, you know, we, this is this was our way of doing it, and this is, you know, it, it's it's. It, I'll tell you what, it's really helped is it's helped in the in the training aspect of you know what AIW does and being able to like go and like tell these people like no like listen to my mistakes that I've made you know like you don't mm-hmm. want to do this or you don't want to act like this or you know I have uh, I have a million stories on what not to do and why you shouldn't do it and, and examples uh, <laughs> so you know uh, to that you know I'm able to kind of pay things forward uh, so to speak and uh, you know let people know like <laughs> some, Sometimes you're, you're you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and this is why, uh, because I I probably did it and failed at it, and uh, you know had to pay for it in in one way or another. So that's a that's a really good question. I don't I don't know if I answered it right or not, but uh, that has me thinking about it a zillion things. So you know, not, not many <laughs> questions do that. Well, there you go. Uh, what what factors were involved in the 2022 schedule? Um, wanting to spread things out. Uh, I think, you know, like when you're kind of like adding as you go, like we did here, you know, this mm-hmm. pretty much yeah. 2021 is like, uh, you know, it's like add a date. Okay, let's add another date. Like is the shows kind of, some of the shows wound up being very close together. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to kind of figure out a way to spread them out. So, so like, you know, for example, as it stands right now, you know, we're not going to be at the Tadmore Shrine the same month that we're at the Odeon. You know, and then if we're at the Tadmore Shrine, you know, the only thing that we'd probably do in this area is like a a Winchester show for a cheaper ticket. So, you know, just a little bit about, you know, that and trying to spread things out and, you know, looking actually like looking at a calendar to where before, you know, and this could come back to bite us or whatever, like forever even you know biggins and i we would sit down and Mm -hmm. we would try to gather as many other independent dates as we possibly could and then work around them you know like Mm -hmm. like really we would like really try to money ball it to where it's like okay this date 95 percent of the people that we would want to book would probably be available right and like we would do all that and we'd put all this time in and then like, you know, evolve would run and they'd pull like a bunch of the guys off the show anyway, you know, or something (laughs) like that. Uh, but we did that forever. And, you know, even going into, uh, this year, you know, I had like, it's actually in my office at home. I got like one of those gigantic calendars and I went through and I looked up everybody's dates and schedules as they were coming. And I would, you know, like it was all, it was all color coded and it'd be like, you know, who's running this day, who's running this day. And then when we were figuring out our schedule, I would look at that and I would go, okay, boom, this date, there's, you know, nothing running or there's only, you know, one show running and it's in, you know, California or something, you know, and, and like mm-hmm. really just trying to, uh, plan it. What was that? <laughs> my, my phone. I was trying to look at the, uh, <laughs> I was trying to look at the AIW things. I was on the Instagram, but, uh, Instagram has this thing where I was trying to scroll up, but apparently you can go on the reels and it just opens oh. to reel and somebody's stupid thing. My bad, but folks. I, Justin Summers, <laughs> I hate me for that. Yeah. So th- that's really what it was. It was trying to like m- give breathing room to the fan base, but also have a bunch of dates at the same time. So like, 
trying really hard to not do those like back to back weekends, you know, um, Mm -hmm. and and things like that, which, you know, possibly could happen. But like as it as it's set now with our three main venues, there's really none of that unless you, you know, consider the tournament weekend. But other than that, it's like, you know, and like like August gets a little gets a little busy because we are going to be back at the north you know north canton again they want us back but you know that's a free show um Mm -hmm. (coughs) you know and then you want to work russell rager in somewhere in you know the august uh time frame so you know right now you know there more shows could get added but as it stands you know we're going you know we're trying to float around you know, Winchester, Odeon, Tadmore Shrine. And then if things get added, things get added from there. But they will probably be at new venues or new, you know, or some kind of like additional entertainment at something else or, you know, like something else. Like, and I know that the uh, Great Lakes Russell Fest people, they want to add a date that is not on the schedule as of yet. So. So you mean you mean more along the lines of something be something like that or the North Canton Street Festival? Yeah, things I like that could or, be added. You know, like a it, it was something outside of the Cleveland area that would be like you know whether it's another venue that wants a show or or something like that. Uh, but like as far as like our hard schedule at our venues that you know we promote everything that's that's it like i'm not adding any more of the odeon or the shrine or the winchester sure which nope you know they're they're and you know it's spread out too like you know we would usually do the majority of the schedule at the odeon Uh, this year we're we're splitting it you know there's going to be more at the shrine there's talk about doing some of the marquee events at the shrine uh so they would happen on a saturday um the winchester is always going to be on thursdays so we're trying to do pretty much if like if it's a Friday we're trying to do the Odeon if it's a Saturday we're trying to do the Shrine and a Thursday is going to be at the Winchester. There you go. It's so, about balance. So, is, is really so. The, so the long answer is a lot of thought went into the <laughs> scheduling, um, and you know it's going to fuck us because I didn't look for the, this is the first time that I didn't look at everyone else's schedule. I went fuck it. These are our dates. And that's it. Well, does that but help? That is the a benefit. That's the benefit of having such a, 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 you know, a built-in crew. You know. Yeah. Yeah. To where, when you're relying on, you know, these, you know, independent wrestling names, like it's hard to build around that. But now we always have a foundation with, you know, the talent that comes out of the school. So, you know, now it's kind of like, okay, here we go. And now let's fill in the blanks, you know, with who's available on these dates. So it's a lot less stressful for us now. You know, who knows? An AEW pay per view can happen or something, and you know, yeah, we're just gonna have to roll with it. You know, like probably. <coughs> but the dates are the dates, and you know, that's yeah. that's where we're at. Well, let's talk about this date coming up, Black Friday. It's here, folks. Uh, This is the week. Hell on Earth 16. That happens at Force Force Sports in East Lake, Ohio. Uh, General admission tickets do still remain. You're welcome to bring your own chair if you have uh, the, I don't know, what would you call them? Lawn chairs? You know, the uh, ones that come in the bag maybe and come out. Camping chairs? Yeah, camping chairs with a little cup holder in it, whatever. Bring them. You can sit in them. Uh, or otherwise it's, you know, standing room only. So also, I guess that's probably worth mentioning. If you set your chair up just kind of wherever, uh, don't get angry if people stand in front of you this Friday, right? If you kind of put your chair in the middle of the room. Right. It's people are going to stand wanna, in front of it. People are going to stand in front of it. If there's a ton you're of gonna space. Have to make like, you're going to have to make like a de facto fourth row. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then just go from there. Um, what 
what is the match that you are maybe looking most forward to on this card? The main event. Who's the third man? Okay. I didn't know if you would say that or if you would say Kaplan and PCO. <laughs> well, that too. I, mean, okay. I, I, I think it's a good card. I think it's, you know, it, it, it covers a lot of ground, you know, the, the, the new kind of era of, of AIW people coming in legends, uh, Psycho Clown, PCO coming back. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of, like, just... Uh, I was trying to cover all the bases with this card, you know, and, and not to mention Double J going to be in the house. Yeah. Um, and that's really... That, that was really the goal is, you know, I, I want this, you know, and I, I know this is a hard sell Monday. We haven't really been hard selling it. You know, I was looking at these ice cream cards for a little bit distracted <laughs> during the <laughs> first part of this podcast, but... Um, you know, I've said it from since we came back, like I wanted, I want this to be the biggest one of the year. And I know that we won't retain every single person, but I want this to be, you know, the shift in momentum that we need. Um, it's been, you know, kind of like start, stop up and down. And a lot of that probably has to do with, you know, a lot of different factors, you know, be it the pandemic or the scheduling that I talked about where things were scheduled close together. And, um, you know, we were just fitting dates in where we could fit dates in trying to fit dates around, you know, everyone else's dates, uh, in 2022, quite frankly, I think it's going to be impossible to plan around everyone's dates, you know, like I just, you, 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 you it, it, there comes the point where you just got to start worrying about yourself and your, you, you know, us. Uh, so I think we need that, you know, we need that kind of push up the hill, you know, that last push up the hill mm-hmm. and hopefully we can ride that momentum all the way through 2022. You know, are, are we going to, pull 500 people a show i would doubt it you know do i want to pull 500 on friday absolutely you know i i think that is uh, a number that is you know what we need and uh it will help it's you know it's gonna help us and you know we're you know we're going down the hill towards 2022 with ethan page returning and You know, even though it's a smaller venue, Max Caster coming. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to keep kind of, you know, riding the wave and um, hope that, you know, this is, you know, the catalyst for the change that, you know, we're we're all looking for as far as, you know, coming out on the other side of this pandemic. You know, even though the pandemic is probably always going to be here in some capacity, I'm saying the company coming out of the pandemic and, you know, the fan base and, you know, getting back to some sense of normalcy to where, you know, we were before. And, uh, I really think Friday is the day to start. Um, we started a little bit in Akron, you know, Akron kind of snuck up and shocked us all in a good, in in a good way. Um, there's no reason why we can't do that Friday in East Lake. And, uh, you know, close out the year at the Odeon in the same fashion. I, I, I really do believe, and I've, for whatever reason, always thought since February or whenever we started, you know, really figuring out we can do some dates and put some stuff on the books, I always thought that Hell on Earth would be the end, you know, the end is of this kind of start and stop era. Yeah, sure. Um, as you as you look at this card, it, it seems like when we look at shows after the fact, or or it's that night and we watch the matches, there's always um, a few a few moments or a few matches, and you're like, man, that that's a that's a star making moment or match for that person. And I see a lot of opportunities for that to happen on this card. We already talked about some of the matches where it happens and you know all this sink or swim type stuff, including uh, we have Riley Rose returning for the first time from injury at AIW, taking on Jocelyn Navarro, and that's another one. All right, here you go, uh, young folks. Go out and, and show what you've got. 
do you see anyone or do you see any moments where already in in your mind uh, you foresee people looking back uh, Friday at the end of Friday night and saying, oh, wow, that like that's this was a special night for this particular person? I think that's kind of a trick question, honestly. Uh, okay. I think I don't want to jinx anything or put too much pressure on anybody or anything like that. I, I think that this card was put together with a lot of potential for that, you know, and it goes into the wrestler's hands after that. And, you know, the, sometimes they hit a grand slam. Sometimes they hit a single, sometimes they strike out. But I think that there is so much opportunity. And I think if this sells the way that I think it will sell this week, the way that I hope it'll sell this week and the crowd. Cause I think where we're at ticket wise, which is decent. I think that we can double that number by Friday. And if we do, and there's all those people there and all these young hungry wrestlers are all jazzed up back there. I think that that is a recipe for incredible success for everybody. And there is a lot of potential for a lot of people to try to steal the show. Uh, so I don't want to put that stamp on one match because really it could happen in every mm-hmm. one. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, so the advice would but, kind of be, you know, Hey, it, it, the advice I guess would be then to everybody on the show, uh, go out and try to have the match of the night. Top. I mean, that should maybe always be the case, but but top uh, top whatever is before you, you know. And here's the thing: is you know, I why this show I think always does well is there's a lot of families that whether you agree with all that or not, a lot of people coming together on Thursday, they have nothing to do on Friday, and a lot of people are able to say, "Hey, I'm wrestling on Friday." there's a lot of that additional pressure that's going to be on, you know, especially the local base wrestlers that are going to have family members and, you know, long lost cousins and people home from college and all that stuff coming out to see them wrestle for the first time. Uh, so that adds an additional kind of layer to everything as well. Um, this show always does well for us. I want this one to be the, Best ever, which is tough because the Kevin Nash show in 2019 was gigantic. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, there's so many shows that we never kept statistics on. Uh, but that's the one in the modern era to beat. Uh, and I think, I hope that we can do it Friday, you know, and I, it, it it's a team effort, you know, and you see people like members only, uh, you know, they're they're putting promos out there. They're hustling. Everybody, you know, if everybody does that, there's no reason why we can't blow that 2019 Hell on Earth 15 out of the water. I mean, that would really be something. Uh, and it, it's, it's crazy to, to think about, you know, like, man, last time we had Hell on Earth was two years ago. And that was it. We didn't know what was going to uh, what was going to be waiting for us right around the corner. Uh, just right. a, a which few, is crazy. Few short months, yeah. And and that, I mean, that was largely, uh, you know, the last uh, our last bit of normalcy. I mean, we I guess we kind of had it for a couple more months there, but man, that was our such a huge show. Like we've talked we've talked about it many times on this podcast. The momentum coming out of that was crazy, and. Uh, and that's it's, what I think we need. That's what I think we need Friday. I think we yeah. need that momentum to 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 push us up that hill a little more, and you know, hopefully, you know, we can coast through twenty twenty two and continue to, to kind of build. Like, you know, I'm not I'm not uh, unrealistic. I know, you know, if we pull a big number on Friday, we're not going to pull that number in December, January, February. There's going to be it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, this is more of like the, you know, re-welcoming us to the world party, right? Like there's a lot of fans 
that have not come to any of the shows that, that we've come back to. You know, there's a lot of potential for new fans out there. Wrestling is getting somewhat popular again. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a, a lot of good things kind of out there in the atmosphere, you know, to, to help us, you know, get there. And there's a lot of potential. Uh, I don't think that, you know, if we pull a huge number that we're going to pull it every month. But, you know, it's about building that, that base and, you know, you have the hard courts that support everything. And then if you can get some more of those people that support, you know, three, four, five, six shows a year, you know, there's a, there's just so much potential. And I think it, it, it all starts Friday. I'm, I'm usually not very optimistic. Uh, I'm still not super no. optimistic about Friday, but uh, I am optimistic about the potential that exists for Friday. And, you know, my, gut feeling of a walk up you know because uh, the ticket I mean the tickets are doing well and it's nowhere close to you know the Brook Park Kevin Nash Hell on Earth but I am very very kind of positive and hopeful that this will be the first one with a gigantic walk up again alright let's uh, I'm going to wind this thing down with some fun ones because, uh, well, it is Thanksgiving week, John Thorne. And these questions were posed in the Discord. Uh, what are we each thankful for on this Thanksgiving? Uh, well, I'm kind of thankful that, you know, uh, the fans that stuck by us really did, you know, they stuck by us and we were able to not go completely <laughs> out of business uh, throughout COVID and, you know, these comeback shows. Uh, and, you know, I'm, like I touched on it earlier with the question, you know, what would you do differently? Uh, you know, I'm thankful that I do have that kind of good foundation and, you know, real life to where AIW isn't, you know, the make or break you know my life or how my life's going is making or breaking aiw you know it's i'm thankful that you know i was i'm in the position that i am right now with you know a, a career outside of wrestling a career inside of wrestling and uh you know it's kind of coexisting i, I always tell the students you know live your life like a pie chart and kind of, you know, separate those things and try to find good foundation and, you know, all these things, real life, um, wrestling, you know, personal life. And I think, you know, if you can separate them and, you know, you find a good balance. So I'm thankful that, you know, I have that, that balance, so to speak, going on. And I, I think it's, you know, helped us navigate through this, you know, crazy, 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 pretty much two years. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I would say I'm thankful for the fact that um, I'm very similar. That momentum built end of 2019, going into 2020, um, for a lot of things in my life and things that I do, uh, it didn't just end when everything shut down and the and the, you know that they found their way back. Uh, be it AIW and everything that we're doing because. It, you know, it, it truly is something that I, I really enjoy and am passionate about and excited about doing. And, and we had all of that. And it's great that we are, you know, we, we, we've been able to to get that back. Um, you know, I got to start working with the Cleveland Monsters again. And when that ended in 2020 and they shut the season down, uh, I didn't know if I'd have that opportunity again. And uh, so that's back and just starting to get busy and... The comedy is coming back. So, um, you know, it's similar. It's, um, there's, there are just, that's a parallel thing to everything in my life, kind of all the different things that I do is that this stuff is, is picking up momentum again. And, uh, I'm very thankful to that. I, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with work that I've put in, but, um, still it's, it's nice to have. Um, all right, here we go. 
If you could invite a pro wrestler you haven't met yet over for Thanksgiving, who would it be? That's a uh, that's a tough one because I've met uh, a lot. I know that's what I was thinking. Um, I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. I mean. <laughs> Oh, I might have, those I would, are like you know yeah. like the, a lot of the other ones like I've met I was watching you know I, I had I don't know what I was watching that ruthless aggression thing yesterday mm-hmm. and it's just like I pretty much met, like met so many of these people you know maybe you know I, I don't think I ever met the undertaker but you know, just like the gigantic, gigantic stars, you know, like, and even some of them, you know, I've, I've, I've met, um, so yeah, probably, you know, one of those, you know, like attitude era pillars. Yeah. Yeah. I would say mine would be the rock. I would, I'd have, uh, I'd have Dwayne over his whole family. He could bring the kids. I don't care. Uh, have the the Johnson family over for for Thanksgiving? That'd be a great time. Yeah, it's got to be the Rock or Stone Cold, I would think. Yeah, I don't think I'd, I'd have enough uh, beer in house for Stone Cold, but I got that tequila ready for the Rock. Yeah, no problem I mean, there. That's a that's an interesting question too. You know, it's it's kind of weird because like, you know, even when trying to decide like who to book and stuff, it's like very few people kind of get me excited anymore. You know what I mean? Because it's just not my era anymore. I think that's kind of like, you know, that's a whole other thing with, you know, people hating WWE and all that stuff now, but like, it's just not made for me, you know, and it's probably not made for you anymore either, you know, but yeah, uh, which is okay. I think people miss that. It's made for new, it's made for new people, which Mm -hmm. is whatever. But, uh, you know, like when I think about, you know, who to book for, a meet and greet it's a lot of it is like you know who would i be excited to meet you know who do i want to you know sit down and have a conversation with uh that has a ton to do with it and uh it's getting really thin you know so it's like Mm -hmm. uh you know soon it's gonna be like all business decisions you know what i mean and like that's just not that's not that fun you know like um you know, because there's people that you can bring in, you know, it's going to be good business, but like, it's a whole other thing when it's like somebody that you like want to, you know, talk to and be around and like have fun with, you know, like, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the Thanksgiving question is even a tough question to, to answer, you know, you've now you've met him and we'll see him on Friday, but I mean, I think this is a no brainer question. If double J Jeff Jarrett says, uh, hey, John Thorne, I'm going to be in town a day early. Can I come to Thanksgiving? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a double J is um, for everybody coming to the show. I want your opinion because double J can make you feel like he's known you for 35 years and you guys yes. are just the best of friends. And I want to know if that shines through during the meet and greet because every time I've ever met him or talked to him, uh, just such a charismatic, smooth talking guy. Uh, just, uh, you know, and, th- and that's why I think he's going to be a good meet and greet. Yeah. I couldn't have uh, said that better. I totally agree with that. It, it 100% is, is that person just makes you, man, makes you feel like a million bucks. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, I mean, love, he's loved he's, having him. He's, in. Yeah, he's great, and I'm looking forward to it. And all our correspondence, uh, you know, leading up to this booking has been, uh, you know, nothing but great. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. You know, you never know, like, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people have been listening to his uh, My World podcast. I mean, very incredibly interesting life, career, always finds a way to land on his feet somehow. Uh, always, so you know in that respect good good ally to have for you know whatever he has lined up down the road because i'm sure he's gonna do something or wind up somewhere so uh you know just always good you know 
Good to have uh, the double J friendship in the back pocket. Yeah. Well, hey, there you go, folks. One more time. Uh, for sports, East Lake, Ohio, this Friday, go to shop.aiwrestling.com for tickets. Only general admission remains. You're welcome to bring chairs. You're going to have to make your own row. Um, it's all going down. Hell on Earth 16, Psycho Clown, PCO, uh, a Double J, Jeff Jarrett with a meet and greet. Uh, all going to be there. The Broski, Matt Cardona teaming up with Broski number one, Broski number two. I don't know which is which, but it's Philly Collins, Marino Tanaglia, PME. Uh, they are joining forces. I've already joined forces with Matt Cardona, and they are taking on uh, the Rip City Shooters. Joshua Bishop and Wes Barkley. Who their third member is, we still don't know. We're going to find out on Friday. Maybe it'll be Double J. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Who knows? Not a clue. Uh, they'll be there. PCO versus Kaplan. The Bitcoin boys uh, taking on members only. There is so much. Follow at AI Wrestling on all social media. You can check out the entire card. You got a great four way with Chase Oliver, it's Pretty Boy Smooth. Uh, Derek Dillinger and Levi Everett goes on and on. So check all of that out. We didn't even talk about two infinity and beyond. We'll be there. Colin Delaney Cheech, uh, taking on his 11th, his 11th hell on earth. He says, yeah, taking on, uh, bulking season, Chuck stone and Arthur MacArthur, 11 hell on earths for Colin Delaney. That's pretty incredible. Uh, the, the amount of statistics that he can rack up, uh, for AIW, just appearances and everything, just uh, just amazing. You know, when you when you talk about the workhorse for AIW, uh, Colin Delaney maybe is the guy you start the conversation with, right? You know, somebody we always sign, talk. Somebody we always sign this guy. Somebody yeah. sign this guy. No one's ever going to beat his records. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about how great Lewis Linden is and how he's the uh, you know the standard that we throw people in there with, but. Uh, Colin Delaney is also that guy, 100%. So uh, looking forward to seeing those guys again. Again, shop.aiwrestling.com for your tickets. John Thorne, any final words, any final push here for Hell on Earth 16 this Friday? I mean, hey, I think I did a, a pretty good push about 10 minutes ago. So You yeah. did. You did a great push. Let's, let's, let's just let's pack it. You know, that's that's really all I'm concerned about is, you know, let's – Tell your friends, you know, bring somebody new. Let's grow this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, oh, why don't, uh, you know, when is so-and-so going to come? Or, you know, why doesn't so-and-so promotion do a show here? We're fucking here. You know, <laughs> like, we, yeah. we're, we're here. We're going to provide anything you need. Uh, that's, you know, what we do. I think our, you know, track record speaks for itself. Uh grow this you know like let's let's this is our this is our chance that's truly how i feel like it's it's now or never for this company and it starts friday there you are folks it starts friday and then don't forget to join us for the after party we will be at bogside pub uh in willowick i think it's east 305 east 305th street uh so join us there the, the kitchen open late so that you can get some food and, of course, drink specials as well. Other than that, that's going to do it. We hope to see all of you this Friday in East Lake, Ohio, for Hell on Earth 16. And uh, if we don't, for whatever reason... Oh, by the way, this is not streaming live on IWTV, right, John Thorne? So if you really want to know what happens ahead of time, you, you have to be there. Well, it is going to stream live on IWTV. Oh! Oh, snap. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Hope you listened all the way to find that one out, folks. But uh, be there anyway to provide an incredible environment. Uh, so for those who couldn't fly across the country and are watching on IWTV or across the pond, as they say, because we've got some European fans of uh, AIW, uh, you know, help us pack this out to set the tone for what they can expect from AIW, from its crowd, uh, from its shows. So be there. And if for whatever reason you cannot, then we will talk to you right here next week on The Card is Going to Change. I see the metrics. We are 
pretty big in Uruguay. Hell yeah. Didn't know how to respond to that one, did you? <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't we be big in Uruguay? <laughs> 